There's nothing more delicious than having fabulous new threads, but unfortunately we all have this sort of, what we call in Cumbria, a scrow, a mixture of threads that really don't go with any project that we're currently doing. But this is the Stash Buster, and uh, what I want to do is end up with a range of colours, not the same as this, but actually tone together and tell a story throughout the design. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group colours around on the linen. Never do it on the table or um, on a different fabric because this fabric will actually suck the colour away. It's a bit like wearing uh, linen in colours like this in the winter when you're pale. They really don't suit most people. So um, you really need to have a good look at the colours and count this as a colour and a texture. So what I'm going to do is actually try and pick out some stories of colour that might go together. So if you just grouped the greens together and just place them round the edge of the design. This is rather like showing you my least tidy room, isn't it? It's rather embarrassing to see how appalling the threads look when they've been hanging around. But I'm sure we all have little stashes like this. So. You can see I've put some oranges, some reds, some blues, some yellows, greens. Now this doesn't have to be wool at all. In fact, I have quite a few gorgeous threads that I've collected in my time traveling around America and Australia and New Zealand and absolutely perfect threads. But I'm wanting to use my old threads because this is the moment that I can have that time and concentration to do that and then introduce new threads as a bit of a luxury. So that's a green, a sort of a green. So what I'm looking at here is actually to find the colours that will shade well together. So if I take that one back, ish, if I look at uh, the numbers on them, you'll see that that's 208, that's a sort of terracotta, 721 from a slightly different range. That's again the same colour, 721 and 205. Now, although they're from different Appleton's ranges, those three colours would shade pretty well. In fact, these two would almost shade because they're sort of similar importance and that might be rather fun. So I'm just going to leave that there as a fun colour. And then the same with the yellows. If you move over here, Richard, I'm sorry, I'm going to jump around a bit because I'm quite excited when I get the colours out. So that is a 694 and again 694 so I have plenty of that colour. In fact I've got another 694 so I might make that a, a big colour in this piece and 843 which is a sort of magic yellowy green colour. Um, it's a similar to a 313 if we can find any of those but we can't. Um, and then Again, the pinks, if I look, that is actually really good shading and you could use that for a petal for a flower or for a particular feature. Obviously, it's a unicorn, so everything's got to be realistic. Um, and then look at the greens again, get the palest and just see what you can do with these colours. And the clue is in the number. Those are both the same, 292. That is a later colour in that one, 295. And what's this one? That's 644, which is a sort of similar range. And we can just put the 64s together. That's 641. And the 156s. These are all the sort of Jacobean, really gorgeous greens through to blues. And I'm just going to have those two together. And that's another 644. So we've got quite a lot of that one. The 404 is a very bright colour, it's more of a Georgian colour I would say, but uh, that looks like a later 6-4 to me, but it sort of goes, that would go in that range pretty well. Oops, that's 6 four, seven. so those, all those are quite sympathetic with each other, quite like that. Now, the blues obviously again, pale too dark but I haven't got much of a middling blue which is sort of a shame really but oh I have got a middling blue might be the same one no nope, it isn't 
now you can see that that's from one range and this is from the other three two two and then nine two three in fact i haven't used the three twos for years so that's a pretty old thread um if your threads break you'll know that they really are too old to use that's the second one of that one and a 155 would be lovely in there that's great i'm enjoying this so that's a 153 you can come over here and join your friends in the same range although actually you might be better off if you get anyway i've got one of each so browns hmm, we haven't got any browns and that's 903, 904. I'm really excited about this because I'm going to use these, but I'm going to bring in some greys and creams for the unicorn at the special request of Ophelia. So, uh, but the mane and the tail are going to be in amazing colours and variegated threads. If I've got any left, I'm not a great variegated thread girl. But um, those are beautiful. And I just bought them because I love the beauty of them, but actually have no use at all. Purples, which are very rare in cruel work of the era I'm stitching. This fantastic greeny yellow colour. The mane and the tail, you could just go to town with and use up um, little bits of thread. You could use knitting wool and couch it. I could use these uh, greens and purples. So, that could be glorious technicolour here. Very simple greys and whites in the body. And I've already got a plan here. So the blues I'm going to use for laden couch work across the back here. And this is actually just laid right across the shape. Or if you're not confident about that or you haven't got a frame, you could just do a, a cruel stem stitch, cruel outline stitch or any linear stitch to create the same effect. So, how, what do we think about the colours? I think we need some snow. So we've got this or the grey for the tones in the cloud up here. That would be pretty good. We've got some blues to go behind. Now they don't need to be the same colour all the way behind. We can vary this a lot. But um, I think we're pretty equipped. And now all we need to do is set it up in the frame and get going. 